Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Womogo Teams. Breakfast show, this time is lunch hours. So lunch hours, we have got something little to eat and uh, maybe rest a little bit, have a little nap since we are working from home. We are working from home as you can see. So there is no hurry, we can have a little rest. This is my home office in Gurugur Manor, London. My home office. So, um, I wanted to discuss, I wanted to discuss um, something small. <clears throat> Usually I don't take lunch. But the manner in which I had my breakfast today, I had little little things, including banana and 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 banana and um, uh, od, banana and od, and then Bombay mix, and then uh, groundnuts, roasted groundnuts, and coffee, black coffee, and all that. So that breakfast filled me. But it wasn't heavy. I usually have very heavy breakfast, so lunch I skip. I skip the lunch. So if you're struggling, if you're struggling with food to eat, why do you want to eat three meals in a day? Is what I don't understand. Some people don't have money, but they insist on eating three meals a day. If there's something, if they got something, they eat three meals a day. It's not good for you. Eat heavy breakfast, skip lunch, eat dinner early at 6. Eat dinner at 6 uh, p.m. Go to sleep in the night uh, after drinking warm water. Go and sleep. Drink warm water. Go and sleep. That's, that's fantastic. You, 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 will not, you will not be suffering from hunger, cage. Cage, probably You'll be all right. Why are people struggling to have three meals in a day? When you have something small, you're quick to go and have three meals in a day. You're wasting food. It's not going to be digested in you. So let's say people who go and work in the garden. In the past, what they actually used to do, you have a small, what is called, um, um, uh, goga, you have goga in the garden, iporo, ingetporo, goga. So goga, you put food in it, okay? Cold food, you put food in it. So that's what you use for breakfast. So let's say angija and all that, you put cold food in iporo, i goga. So then you eat it after digging for a while or weeding for a while, you eat it. Then if it remains, you still eat there, you goga. Goga is safe, but then you don't have a padlock on it. So, you know, it's just something that uh, people use for keeping food and water so that it is cool whilst you are, you are digging. You just, it's a structure. Um, I'll, get, I'll get the picture and send it to you so that you can have a look of. But it's just a small structure. Eh? Raise, you raise the platform inside where you put things, you raise it a little bit so that uh, uh, animals cannot contaminate it, animals that can creep into the goga. Eh? But then you have a door, but there's no lock. So you can just, you can just tie it with a rope, eh? the door. Tie it with a rope. That's it. Secure it with a rope. So the animals will not be able to enter. So in the morning, you eat uh, uh, your food. In the evening, whatever is left you leave it there and then you come back home so it goes that there was a man who had um uh left his village eh, somewhere in sudan came and was consistently eating food in people's goga hmm? then you know, 
the, the in the goga also you leave uh, farming equipment like hose and all that there was no theft there was no theft in africa there was no theft we didn't need padlock in africa before white people came and arabs we didn't need padlock there was no padlock in africa not that we didn't we didn't not that we didn't know we didn't have the technology we iron iron mongering started in africa mathematics started in africa so the things, the things that uh, uh, white people now take as theirs, actually all started from Africa because even human being, human life started from Africa. So then, what it follows is this: that in Africa there was complete honesty and there was no theft. Um, in 1824, an MP eh, in the House of Commons walked through from. Uh, North Africa to South Africa, from South Africa came back again to Central Africa, from Central Africa to East Africa, from East Africa went to the west coast of East, uh, of West Africa. Of, of West Africa, Africa was not yet Africa; it was just known like as the Dark Continent. There was no name; it was not it was called um, it was not called Africa then. So when in 1824 he came back, he said that he went and found the people of those nations. No one was, uh, no one was unemployed. One, no one was homeless. Two, there, there are no beggars. Three, there are no thieves. Four, eh? but then he went into the House of Parliament, House of Common in England, London. He went to the House of Common and proposed to the House of Common that those people we need to subjugate them. Can you imagine? That we have done nothing. They have done nothing to you. You're saying we need to subjugate them. We need to make them know that our culture is more superior than theirs. So that in time, they begin to respect us and they begin to think that our culture is better than theirs. Otherwise, they, they have a superior culture than ours. So they, the white man, decided to deliberately enter Africa by force and make sure that we are brought down to our knees and this is the situation we are in but at the moment we have come to a position of corondo we are now draw so at the moment the white people okay for example america went to somali america tried somali for less than a week they withdrew because they found the fighting was not the way that they thought they would fight america don't want to die if america europe and, and england if they're fighting they don't want to die they want to kill people, but they don't want to die. If they start dying, they will withdraw. So now in Somali, uh, Uganda has, and Kenya and Ghana and Rwanda, I think, are in Somali. The Amisam, they're in Somali. They're doing a good job. What did America do? The America did not last in Somali for a month. Okay? After the Black Hawk was shot, and then American soldiers, dead soldiers, were pulled and, you know, shown on TV in the street. America just had to withdraw. So um, America, they are afraid to die. If you are afraid to die, America, they are trying to go back to that. Tummy, their mom's tummy. If you are scared, rush back and go into your mommy's tummy then see if you can still access the tummy. You may not be able to access the tummy because you're too big now to enter. You have exit, you cannot enter. Once you exit, you cannot enter mom's tummy. That's the thing. So anyway, what that shows you is that it is not true that if you are facing white people, therefore, um, they are very formidable. They will fight they are formidable. They will not be able to be defeated. You can defeat them. You know, we can defeat them. Especially when it is in your field, in your ground. I like I like President Museven when he says that um, uh, these people, they, they disorganized Saddam Hussein because Saddam Hussein was not a good organizer. They disorganized Gaddafi because Gaddafi was not also a good organizer. If they try other people, who are more organized, they will be taught a lesson. So, <laughs> that time is now. 
There's no need to, there's no need to fear that aid is going to be removed. Aid is not feeding people in the villages of Africa. Aid is basically feeding ministers. That's why we find that like the Mabati of Karamoja, the Mabati got lost. But the Mabati got lost where? The Mabati got lost in the prime minister's office. You know, so that's real problem. The prime minister himself need to be arrested. Not only uh, Nandutu and these other ministers. Even the prime minister need to be arrested. People in the prime minister's office need to be arraigned. So this business of the Mabati of Korbaja, if you want to fight corruption, the corruption needs to be uprooted from the root. And the root is in the prime minister's office. So the officials there need to be uprooted. And the people who have eaten, they need to vomit. Anybody who has eaten wrongly, they need to vomit. And that's the thing. So Nandutu and all this, these are just little, uh, what do you call it, little fish, big fish. They are there. They all need to be, they all, they all need to be uh, made to vomit what they have eaten. Then corruption, fighting corruption will be well on its way in Uganda. That's what I would say. Now, uh, I was saying that uh, white people just play with our intelligence now. If I decide to speak actually here in London, eh, I will communicate. I will communicate. But they will not listen because they don't bother to learn languages. They want everybody to speak English for them. So are you going to be like that? Oh, I can see so many. I can see so many people. I can see so many people. They are making their children speak English and speak no other language. That's wrong. You know what is going to happen? If, for example, you ever make your child come to Europe or America, what will happen is they will ask them, what's your first language? You will say it's English. But they will twist you. Maybe they will put um legal things and you don't know they'll talk about things that you don't know about here and nobody you will not have any room to survive because they'll say you know you speak english so your first language is english but like me my first language was english too but then the thing is that i can speak Swahili a little bit i can speak um luganda a little bit I can speak actually very well. I can speak Alu a little bit. I can speak uh, Lang a little bit. I can speak. Eh? So there are languages that I can speak in Luganda a little bit. Oh, I can hear well. Uh, but when you ask me English, is English your first language? It was my first language in Uganda because I, I learned English in, in nursery very well. I started nursery when I was two and a half. I learned English very well in Frobel Nursery in um, Mengo. But uh, to be honest with you, I will never tell anybody that English is my first language. I'll tell them, Luo is my first language. Lebachuli is my first language. So you now try me in Lebachuli. And then I'll mix it with English and we'll get along and we'll see who will know who is who. We'll know who is who. So it's a mistake to think that English is, is the best. You are now, now on top of the world. No rubbish, rubbish. Lemon here, no lie. English here is like Luo in, in, in Gulu. Everybody speaks English. There's so many dialects in English. In fact, so many people who speak English in Uganda, when you come here, you will not be able to communicate with anybody because you'll find that London has an accent. Birmingham has a different accent. Liverpool has a different accent. Scotland has a different accent. And the streets of Brixton, where black people are, they have a different accent. And then if you go to the classes, the schools, the, the different schools, they have different accent as well. And private school, public school, they all have different accent. So which one are you going to, are you going to communicate? In Uganda, the one that you, you, you we, the English that we learn in school in Uganda is always like the Oxford English or the Queen's English. But that English is posh English. If you come and speak that English here, few people listen to you and understand. You need to speak kind of like in it, in it. You, you, water is water. Water is water. Eh? So, what are you going to 
People are going, I need water. And you're standing there. What do you want? You don't know what they're talking about. So you say that you, English is your first language. Wrong. Learn labor surely. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do, I'm going to start teaching and writing labor surely on my platform. It's called Womogi TV. Womogi TV is going to present to you writing and oral English. No, oral Luo. So you learn Luo English. No, no. Luo, you learn Luo hmm? uh, writing and spoken, written and oral. Eh? You learn it in less than two weeks. You should be able to speak or listen to Luo eh? when, I, when, I, when, I, when I start the course. Then what will happen is in six months, you should be able to speak without any accent. Luo, or write it without any problem. Okay? So, in six months, writing and fluency. In two weeks, you will be able to understand and speak. Okay? So, um, I've, met, I've met so many, uh, especially descendants of slaves, who are interested in learning the language. Because they just want to learn any African language at all. But then, you see, Africa, we have land. If it is only land, we have land. So why don't we invite black people who are lost in the Caribbean eh, and Americas? They have no land. We, we, we invite them to Africa. Let them come back and help us deal with our enemies. Our enemies, our real enemies are actually the Arabs, the white people. Kidong, Muniani, Muniani, those are our real enemies. Kidong, Ti, Matete, Aneki, Gang, Konuti. But we need to identify our enemies and deal with them. So some of them don't understand any other language, they only understand English and their own language. If they can understand only one language, they're done. We can defeat them on that. Very easy to defeat them and dominate them. We need to dominate them. So for lunch, I have um, three boiled eggs. Okay, three boiled eggs. And um, eggs, when you boil it and you want to remove the shell very quickly, after you have boiled it, you know, if you keep egg boiling for a long time, it becomes harder and harder. If you want it to be a bit soft, you, you boil it like for 10 minutes, and then that's it. You take it out, it will be very soft, and dagger, 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 dagger. It will be very soft. But then if you keep boiling it, it will be hard, harder, and it becomes harder and harder. But then if you, if you want to remove the shell, the egg shell, neatly, hmm, when you boil egg and it is very hot, eh, Put it straight away in cold water after, after you feel it is ready for you, yeah? So after 10 minutes or so, after boiling the eggs for 10 minutes or so, or more, eh? remove it, put it in cold water. Then when you feel the egg and the egg is now cold, eh? you can now begin to peel it. It will peel absolutely clean without any fragments remaining on the egg, the boiled egg, okay? So that's egg for you. So here we have boiled eggs, three boiled eggs, boiled eggs. I have a tomato, eh? and then I have, um, here we have uh, garlic, garlic and chili, there, uh, sauce, there, garlic and chili sauce. And then we have garlic and herb sauce, there, there. There, and then we have tomato ketchup. Ke tomato ketchup. There, there, and here we have tomato. So ah, very nice. I have also salad dressing, which I haven't used. And mayonnaise. 
Mayonnaise is just the egg white, beaten until it becomes egg white, eh? egg white. You beat it until you, what, you call it beating. You call it something else. But if you beat the egg white, egg white, until it becomes something else. Uh, until it becomes boil, throth, uh, throth, throth. Then, um, um, you serve it. Comes mayonnaise, egg white. It's a lot of work. Something that can be done. So that's in the tray. In the tray also I have London ginger cocktail. This one is made by Pastor Opak Road and Mrs. Pastor Alice Opak Road. They make this drink. It's becoming very popular. It's now about five years old and it's growing in in um in, in the market because uh, you can find them in a few shops now, but I think they're they're taking it very slowly. The marketing, but the marketing can be faster, you know. Yeah, but it's very nice drink, original, lemon, ginger, honey, water. So the ginger is gonna yeah. The ginger is called uh, tangawuzi. The ginger is tangawuzi from Uganda. This ginger is from Uganda. Eh? There's ginger from China, they're, they're massive, they're big, they're big, they're huge, they're not very nice. But Uganda ginger, the Uganda tangawuzi, yay, the best. Everybody wants Uganda tangawuzi. So you can also grow Uganda tangawuzi if you're a farmer. Okay? The market is here. And then I have tea and uh, tea and honey in it, two spoons of honey in my tea cup, in my mug. And then, <laughs> <laughs> Saka water to wash it down. Saka water, wash it down. We wash it down with um with a uh, London ginger cocktail as well. We will wash it down with London ginger cocktail as well. But I want also to drink uh, Rubicon, eh? sparkling mango drink. I want to drink that. So after I've drank this, I'm going to have a break. Eh? I'm going to I'm going to sleep a bit. I'm going to sleep like for thirty minutes. Yeah, if that's okay, that should be okay for everybody. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Bon appetit, everybody. Share this link. Share this. Um, share this video to everybody. Let uh, as many people in your contact as possible get this video, so that we can make business. Okay, there's there's a lot of money to make from food that we grow organically in Uganda, and uh, East Africa and Africa. Organic food. There's money for it. Okay, because it's the best. So the best, I know Uganda more. So the best, the best food comes from Uganda. Okay then, guys, all the best. I see you. What did you have for lunch? Let me know so that I can balance my diet. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.